Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. So today we're going to be talking about ground bait. I know it's not going to be just another video on how to mix ground bait. This one is actually going to be about the mistakes you need to avoid when either mixing or using ground bait. So to start off with then let's talk about if you're in the UK you can go down to the local tackle shop and you can just buy a bag of ground bait. And that's, that's fine, but the problem is there are shelves and shelves full of ground bait. All different types, all different textures, all used for different purposes. So don't just pick up the first bag you see and assume that's going to work. What you need to do is do a little bit of research first of all. Work out where you're going to be fishing, what you're going to be fishing for, and the method you're going to be using to catch them. For example, waggler or method feeder or whatever else. Once you've done that, you can start to think about what kind of effect you need your ground bait to have on the fish. Do you need it to form a cloud as it hits the water? Do you need it to just go straight down to the bottom and then break up? Do you need something in between? All sorts of questions that can affect how many fish you catch. So if you're lucky enough to live in the UK, then just go into the tackle shop and tell them where it is you're gonna fish, what method you're gonna be using, and what fish you're targeting. And if you even know the specific venue, tell the guys in the tackle shop and they'll tell you exactly the right ground bait to use. But what if you don't want to use a ground bait you've just bought off the shelf? What do you do then? Well, the easier answer is you buy some breadcrumbs. A packet of breadcrumbs is the, the basic ingredient for the vast majority of ground baits. And you can either buy it in a pack like that, or if you want to do it really cheaply, what you can do is just save all the slices of bread from the, uh, the loaves that you haven't used up and just dry them out. Keep them in a, a sealed up bag, and then when you're ready, just grind them all down until you've got a nice, fine, powdery ground bait. And you get effectively this. But what you do get is a, a no cost um, element to your ground bait. So now let's talk about mixing ground bait and what not to do. There's all sorts of videos out there on what you do do, but here's some of the things I've seen people do when they get it wrong. And the first one is, when you're mixing ground bait, you always put the ground bait in the bowl first and then put the water on top slowly and stir. We all know that, don't we? Well, actually, not everybody does. Because especially if you're new to the old uh, fishing game, you may not necessarily be aware of the situation. So let's actually do it wrong. I'm just gonna use some basic breadcrumbs and I've just got a bowl here with some water in it. Now I've only put a small amount of water in, but the first question you ask is, well, how much water do I need? And the answer is, you don't know if you do it this way. So now let's put some bait in, some ground bait in, or breadcrumbs in this case, and start mixing it around. If I just do that, Okay, so if you want slop, which is a specific type of ground bait, well, you know, you're gonna end up with slop this way. So you can mix a bit more breadcrumb in. And we're actually thickening up now, as you can see. I could mix more breadcrumb in, but effectively what I've got here is just a stodge. That is not gonna break up when it hits the bottom. So let's have a look at what we've ended up with, shall we? Now, I've taken a ball of this, what is effectively bread paste now, and I'll just drop that into the water in this tank. And basically that's gonna sit there forever and a day and do nothing but, but sit there. So that's not really ground bait. It's not gonna break down properly on the bottom, is it? On the other hand, if I take some of this ground bait, which is some stuff I was gonna use for tomorrow, put it in immediately you can see the difference it's breaking up and hopefully you can see that on this camera i've got in the, the tank looking down immediately it's breaking down but it didn't break down until it hit the bottom now i have done a video on how to mix ground bait and you can have a look at that um, after this if you want to or indeed break off now i'll put a link up above and if you need to you can see how to actually mix ground bait so now let's talk about mixing bowls you don't want something which is too small and it shouldn't have too sharp a corner on the sides. For example, 
This is too small as a mixing bowl for ground bait, unless you're mixing a tiny little batch, which is probably quite unlikely. But the general shape is actually not too bad at all. Nice rounded sides, no problems with the bottom, no lips or edges or anything like that. And on that basis, you'd think that uh, something like this one would be perfect, wouldn't you? And it is almost perfect, uh, but if you're using um, something like I do, which is to use one of these mixers, what you might find is that there are ridges in the bottom of here, which you should be able to see quite clearly on there. But what I find is that it's a lovely size, everything else is perfect, but that little ridge in the bottom just means that I end up with dry ground bait in the bottom and it just causes me all sorts of issues. Now, if you do it by hand, you can get your hand in and you can sort that out. But it needs to have a flat bottom. Now, generally people say, don't use a square bowl. Well, my view is that as long as this square bowl has nice rounded corners on it, and no ridges on the bottom, it works fine. And I've been using this now for years. I can't remember how long I've been using it for, but it's a long, long time. And for the more advanced amongst you, if you're using one of these um, whisks on a drill these days, like a lot of us do, then there's a couple of things to be aware of there too. The first thing is get yourself a decent sized bucket. Okay, you can buy them, um, specially made by the various manufacturers, which have got wide bases and they're quite tall and all the rest of it. I just bought this one at the local DIY store. As I said, nice and round, reasonable sized base, no major ridges or bumps in the bottom, but also it's got height. And the reason for that is, when you put this in, like that, and you start whipping away, then if it's just the initial start of things, you can find with a, a shorter one that you end up kicking ground bait out because of the action of this. And the other thing is, to start off with, have this on the slower speed. So like that. If you use the higher speed, the same thing happens. But these are actually a very, very good way of making ground bait easily. Just got to take care that you put the, the water in slowly and wait until you've got the consistency that you need. And it's the same with all ground baits. Put it in, get to the consistency you think you need by just, just checking it with a quick squeeze of your hand, just like I've done here. And then if it breaks up in your hand, that works great. But a lot of people at that point, doesn't matter whether you're doing it this way or any other way, a lot of people will actually just use it as it is. Don't do that. You've got to wait about 20 minutes or more to allow the, the water to be absorbed by the ground bait. Because what's a good mix now, in 20 minutes time, will definitely be too dry a mix. So you go back and you add a little bit more water until you get to the right consistency, and then it's ready to use. So, you bought the right ground bait, and you've mixed it correctly, and now you just grab a handful and throw it in, don't you? Well, mm, kinda. So what I've done here is I've mixed up four balls of ground bait, I've mixed one fairly hard, one not quite so hard, one fairly evenly, and one quite soft. And they should be in the correct order, hopefully. And, right, so you can see this one is the one which didn't have much of a squeeze, it's breaking down well. This one is breaking down quite well too. This one slightly slower, and this one is actually breaking down much slower. So for example, if you've got a deep water swim, you could use this one, which you've squeezed harder, to get down to the bottom before it breaks up like that. If you've got a shallower swim, you can go to this side over here, where you didn't give it too much of a squeeze, and it'll go down, say, three or four feet of water, and then break up on the bottom. And of course, you've got the two intermediate ones there. So that's just a general idea of giving it a squeeze to take account of the, the water depths. But sometimes you also need to take account of undertow. Now undertow, of course, is when the wind blows the surface of the water that way and the undercurrent takes the rest of it that way. Let's assume your float's here and you've got, just for the sake of argument, an eight to 10 foot deep swim. By the time you've put your bait in, your ground bait in, around your float, and the undertow has taken it that way, 
it could be a metre or more off to one side. So just be aware of conditions, both depth and wind and under, undertow conditions. But just looking down at this now, these two have both melted quite nicely. This one's still got a bit to go and that one's breaking down quite slowly. So you can see how easy it would be to get this wrong. Now the other thing to take account of, of course, is that you may well want it to break down on the way down. So you might have mixed it more dryly and you might have not given it too much of a squeeze so it does break up and forms a cloud on the way down. But that's something I can't really tell you about. It's probably something you're gonna to have to learn by experience or by talking to other people who fish the venue or indeed at the local tackle shop. I think this one on the end here has probably been going for a couple of minutes now and I think it'll probably go for another two or three minutes before it's properly broken down. But the other thing to bear in mind is, you probably can't see this, but I actually mixed this ground bait up yesterday, as I said, um, for a, a, a fishing trip tomorrow. And if you do that, the ground bait becomes somewhat more inert. And by that I mean is that the ingredients tend to have absorbed all the moisture and they don't fizz and have particles going up and around everywhere. Now again, at some point, you may actually want that to happen, but at other times, if you want the fish to feed on the bottom, you don't want to have bits of bait fizzing up all over the place. So just take that into account when you're doing this sort of thing. Another thing to be aware of is, can you freeze ground bait? Well, yes you can, because it can get quite expensive if you just throw it all in at the end. Wouldn't want to try and uh, do that too many times, but if you've had a, a session where you've got plenty of bait left over and it's not got overheated, I see no reason why, certainly for a pleasure day, you can't freeze ground bait. Be aware though, that if you do, and I actually did this specifically last night to show you, I put some sweet corn in it. And if you freeze the ground bait with sweet corn in, some bits of it will sink like that, but you've also got bits that are on the surface. Uh, so if you're gonna do this, probably don't have too much um, corn in the ground bait because it will cause issues with bait staying on the surface. I've seen other people where I've been fishing on the river and you've got a slick of um, sweet corn kernels going down on the surface and obviously they're rising up off the bottom and that has an effect. Some of them have sunk, that's good, but just something to be aware of. Now I was actually just going to use this glass of uh, water here. I'd thrown some in earlier on and hopefully you can see the particles, I'll try not to spill it, the particles in there uh, floating quite readily and it's amazing how buoyant they can become. And just a final thought on adding uh, particles or other additives to ground bait, uh, by all means add particles, things like uh, sweet corn or pellets, you can add crushed hemp, there's all sorts of things you can add but just be aware the more particles and bits and pieces you add to it the more possibilities there are for the ball to break up in mid-air. The last thing you want is to get a nice ball of ground bait, throw it out and find that you've got four or five pieces which don't go the distance and cause you all sorts of issues because your feed just isn't in the right place. And that's also particularly true if you're using maggots. Uh, if you put maggots into a ball of ground bait, they will burrow through it and break, break it up so quickly that you, you literally have difficulty getting it out there into the water. And again, if you've got to throw it a long distance or even catapult it a long distance, you're liable to have the balls break up too quickly on you. So you could either use casters or you can use dead maggots, but really just be very aware of adding particles or maggots or worms or whatever else to your ground bait. And whilst we're talking about adding stuff to ground bait, let's talk about additives themselves. Now there are things you can add to ground bait, but frankly, if you've bought ground bait from the tackle shop, it's probably got everything you need in it anyway. If you're just using uh, breadcrumb ground bait or uh, you want to make up a, a mix of your own, there are things you can use. You may well be aware that I use turmeric powder. Um, you can also use trout pellet powder. And of course, you can use liquid ingredients like this is vanilla. And of course, you can colour it, in this case, yellow. So those things, when you add it to ground bait, are very good. Just be aware, however, that if you decide to add something else to ground bait, let's say, I don't know, something like oats or porridge or, or whatever, um, 
make up a batch first of all, mix it and do the tank test because you may well find that some things make the ground bake stick together. So whilst the base mix may be good, by the time you've added your ingredients, you may end up with that uh, ball of um, stodge that we started off the, the video with. Just something to be aware of, guys. Um, as I say, it's all a subject for experimentation, and feel free to do that, but just test it before you, uh, you use it. Now, before we go, there is one final thing I want to talk about, and that's feeding ground bait on rivers. Now, I fish a local river, which is probably anything from 12 to 15 feet deep. It's got quite a good current and it's tidal. And as I said just a few moments ago about undertows with water, the same applies when you're fishing a river. There's no point in throwing ground bait in next to your float because it's going to be gone downstream. Now, I have done a video on this to explain exactly how this works for you. So again, I'll put up a little um, notification on the screen for you so you can go and have a look at that if you want to. But that's covered some of the, the more glaring things that I see going on um, where people make mistakes with ground bait. There are plenty more and of course I could have gone on for quite some time to do that but you can only go on so much in a video before people get bored. Having said that I hope you have enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you did as always click the like button if you want to subscribe, you can, and until the next time, bye for now.